Hi, I'm Jeremy Simon with 3D Universe, and I'm here today with my partner Chris Jackson of Terrafilm Engineered Filaments. And uh, today we're talking about the 3D Universe Terrafilm Tough PLA material. And uh, I've been doing some testing with this, and I wanted to sit down with Chris and get some insights and share with you some of the unique properties of this material. So Chris, tell us about the Tough PLA. Well, we really like Tough PLA for a lot of reasons, but one of the primary reasons is that it is so versatile in printing. Yeah. You, you get a lot of forgiveness in printing. Your parts don't have the same kind of brittleness that regular PLA has. Right. And uh, it just gives a really nice smooth finish. Um, yeah. Yeah. All the way from layer adhesion, all the way uh, when you're printing to the final part. It's just really pristine. And, and we really like it because of that. Yeah, and that was definitely my experience. You know, as we were doing these test pieces, I noticed, for example, this uh, swatch has these very thin kind of uh, bars in there and things like that would, would typically break pretty easily if you were bending on them with too much force if it was just regular PLA and this definitely gives you a strength that prevents that kind of breakage which I like a lot. What, what kind of specific properties does uh, this material offer compared to some of the other materials? Well one of the things that it does that uh, is better than the regular PLA I guess is that um, and, and one of the things that gives us the properties is it elongation at break is one of the kind of chemical terms that we talk about in polymers and so it's got a little bit more forgiveness in terms of being able to bend and that's kind of what that means that elongation at break um, the other thing that uh, we've noticed is that it's got a better more superior melt flow and what that does is that means that it comes out of your nozzle much better and so uh, from a property standpoint, we try to target a certain range for that melt flow uh, in both our resins and what our final product looks like. I see. So th those are the two things that I would say make it unique. Yeah, and, and again, I think I, I saw some of that in the test printing, and tell me if I'm understanding this right, in terms of that elongation at break, is that more noticeable with thinner areas of the print? So I noticed like something like this, you get some flex to it, whereas you know a thicker part like this, it, it doesn't have that give. That is correct. Okay. It, that, that elongation at break gives you the ability to make a thinner walled part. Excellent. So it's nice. Excellent. Yeah, I uh, often print parts where we're taking things to conferences and such uh, for display purposes, and some of them have you know small pieces coming up that might break if you know they're being tossed into crates and being handled by by people checking them out. And I used to print those in PLA, and I've, I've shifted to making all of those in tough PLA because they really do hold up a lot better. Yeah, one of the things that they we we talk about also in polymers is notched izod, which is a a break kind of uh, point what you were just saying with polymers. Um, the higher basically the notched izod of the polymer, um, the, the, the better break performance that you're gonna get. And that is a unique property of tough PLA. It has um, you know, about 15% more uh, izod strength, I guess is what you would call it, than you know, regular PLA. So it, it does do a little bit better in that regard. So you know, couple that with the elongation at break and you know, making it a little softer so that you have that softer feel on thin walls. I, I just love to print with it. I, if we're gonna do prototypes, et cetera, anymore, that's what we print with as well. So. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with you on that. It's really become my favorite material overall. So with all that in mind, uh, Let's talk about some of the uh, use cases. Where would somebody want to use tough PLA? And I know it's, it's kind of a broad range of use cases, but what are the things that come to mind? Well, people don't know uh, probably a lot about PLA and, and, and because it, you know, it is derived to sort of from biomaterials. Uh, um, and it, but a couple of unique things about PLA in general, it actually does have a little bit of chemical resistance. Um, people don't necessarily realize that. Um, so if you're subjecting something, one of your prototype parts is kind of where we mostly see people using this, and you have a little bit of chemical resistance that it has to withstand, it's pretty good for that. Um, it does withstand some of that. The other thing that I think that happens with, uh, you know, build parts, for example, if you're going to make something that you want to kind of try out and in your application, um, and it might need to be subjected to a little bit more temperature, uh, than what you would see. Tough PLA is a really good application for that. Okay, so the tough PLA does give you a little bit of a higher temperature resistance compared to the normal PLA? It does. It has a little bit higher melt property, what, you know, basically what we call melt deflection, or, or you know, temperature deflection in the, in the polymer itself. Excellent. 
we have printed this in a, a lot of different settings, etc. And I know you have done a ton of work on coming up with what the best properties or best settings for your printers are. Uh, can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, well, we, we do a lot of testing, as you said, and we, we look for that best combination of settings that's going to yield uh, good quality results in terms of overhangs and surface finish and a number of other properties, uh, layer adhesion. We look at a number of different aspects of the prints. Right. There is a range of, of settings and flexibility in, in what's going to work depending on what it is that you're looking for. For example, you can sort of uh, affect the surface finish and the shininess of your print depending on how high or low the extruder temperature is, things like that. But overall in our testing, what we found worked best was about a 225 degree Celsius extruder temperature with a 60 degree Celsius bed, uh, which is pretty much the same as what we typically use for a PLA, and uh, full, full fan speed, 100% fan, you want as much cooling as possible on a PLA-based material like this. So we found that that worked well for us. So you might find that, you know, again, a little bit higher, a little bit lower temperature works because so there's a good range for a tough PLA like this. I'd say anything from 215 to about 240 or so would be okay, depending on what kind of a surface finish you're looking for. Higher temperatures are gonna give you a little bit more of a shiny surface, lower temperatures a little bit more of a matte finish. Um, but uh, what we found was going right about 225C worked well for us. And for your applications, when you print like this, do you use like a Magigoo or anything on your bed plate? Yeah, I typically stick with the Magigoo. Uh, the Magigoo original formulation works quite well with the tough PLA, just a little bit of that on the glass. I, I love how well it sticks, and then as soon as that bed cools, it just releases the print. So that's my go-to for a material like this. Yeah, I know how that is, because you can get it to stick, and then you, you're taking a knife and trying exactly. to Exactly, and you damage your print in the right, process. Right, exactly. So I, I love the Magigoo for that. What did you like about some of those uh, unique things that you've printed with this material? Well, mostly what we discussed, you know, the overall uh, strength of the parts is excellent. These parts are, are very solid. Even the uh, swatch that we printed here, which has some thinner and, and sort of more fragile parts, holds up really well, even when you bend it with some significant force. We've printed the 3D Benchy, which we like to use as a standard sort of evaluation for materials because it, because it provides a, a lot of opportunities to evaluate the material properties. You get some nice uh, wide surfaces where you can see the, the quality of the surface finish. You get some nice overhangs. You get bridging. You can see a lot of different aspects of how the material performs. And overall, as you can see, this came out really nice and cleanly. And uh, that's the main thing that we look for, just a nice, clean, high-quality print. And then we printed uh, something that was a little bit more use case specific. In this case, I thought, well, what would I print with a tough PLA? Something I wanted to be really strong and kind of heavy duty. And this is something that's called a thwack, which you can find on Thingiverse. It's a 3D printable hammer, which uh, we actually like to use for kind of, if you need to tap a print to kind of loosen it from the build plate, the thwack comes in really handy for that. So we printed this with 100% infill out of the tough PLA. And again, it just printed really nicely, good clean surface finish very solid and I won't bang on your table here, but this thing has <laughs> held up quite well. Nice. Okay, well, Chris, thanks for sitting down with me. Uh, I hope that all of you will check out the Tough PLA material. Um, go to shop3duniverse.com to learn more about this and to place an order. And I hope you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel to see other videos like this. Thanks. Thanks, John.